You're listening to Washington Watch. I'm Tony Perkins. A lot of focus on New York as they move toward the apex of their coronavirus cases. Now, while there's a vast difference in the roll numbers, the per capita number places Louisiana right behind New York in terms of the number of deaths related to the COVID-19. Why? Why is that? And are Louisiana hospitals like those in New York reaching capacity? Joining me to answer those questions and more from my home state is Dr. Catherine O'Neill, infectious disease expert and chief medical officer at the Our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center in Baton Rouge. Dr. O'Neill, welcome back to Washington Watch. Hi, Tony. Thank you so much. Let me first start with that. How, how is it that Louisiana is number two in the nation with per capita deaths? It's always difficult to understand why some of us are ahead in the COVID journey than others. Uh, I think that everybody is seeing a slow increase in communities. There's been a lot of speculation that we are ahead because of our accelerators of Mardi Gras. We definitely start a festival season earlier than the rest of the world. So we are a high tourism place like New York. And, and then we got a got an early start this year on, on tourism events with Mardi Gras. So how, you know, we see, we see that. In fact, I had Franklin Graham on yesterday, the Samaritan's Purse putting up a uh, mobile hospital uh, there in Central Park in New York City because of the overflow. They just, they're, they're out of capacity. How is Louisiana, in particular Baton Rouge, doing in terms of capacity to handle the patients? We are at capacity today. I, I have to tell you, it, it's a difficult question to answer. We've seen an, a steep acceleration in admissions through the week. And, and while we're making beds, so we're not denying patients, capacity in legal terms means that I don't have a bed for you. And I have beds because I continue to make beds. But we, have, we are at our census today. Um, and so this is the most patients that we usually have. At this point, our main stretch is that we don't have the personnel to continue to add beds, but we are adding them and we are stretching our personnel because we have more patients coming through the door. So, it, you know, up until this point, it, it was it's difficult because you're taking care of COVID patients and PPE and testing. And now we are starting to see that we don't have the personnel to take care of patients the way we would want to. Just moments ago, uh, I've got an alert on my phone, which has, is a Louisiana number, uh, that the governor has extended the stay-at-home order through April the 30th in Louisiana. Where do the experts believe we are in the curve? How, how far before we hit the apex of, of our cases in Louisiana? We don't know, and the reason why, and that's very frustrating, is that we continue to see an escalation in numbers. So we haven't seen the curve start to flatten out, and until we see that with reliability, I have to tell you that we're we're headed up, and, and those are scary numbers to talk about. By the end of the month, um, the projections don't look good, and I, I agree with the governor. We fully support the mandate to stay home until we start to see flattening of the curve. We still have to, to use social distancing as our defense. Well, speaking of that, there's been a lot of conversation about people wearing masks. Um, is that a good practice for everybody to be wearing masks? Masks are used when people are infected, and they're great barriers for droplets when you're trying to prevent a patient who's infected from transmitting droplets across the room. We watch a lot of people wear masks in our business, right? And unless you are wearing that mask out of fear of contracting an illness, we see a lot of misuse of the mask. So people move it around on their face, they touch it, they contaminate it. And um, I, I am concerned that the universal masking discussion will overshadow how important it is for people to stay home, which is really the best defense is social distancing. Uh, masks may offer a layer of protection, but that layer means that people are near someone, and, and that's what we don't want right now. Well, Dr. O'Neill, that brings up a good question because we've seen this controversy in Baton Rouge where, you know, there's been um, – pastor, at least one pastor in particular, that uh, continues to meet, saying, well, if you can go to grocery stores, uh, Walmart, why can't you meet at a church? What's the difference between those two settings? I am a churchgoer, and I am a Walmart shopper, and I can tell you that I treat both very differently. So going to the store these days is a humble experience where I am um, very quick, and I even stand back from the person checking me out. I wash my hands before I go in. I wash them on the way out. When I go to church, I am communing with the people that I love the most. We're singing, and we know that we've already had an outbreak in a church in D.C., 121 members who decided to have choir practice, right, 45 of them got COVID and two died. 
side. So we know that singing and hugging and being near each other, which are things we do at church and we love to do, actually spread COVID rapidly. Whereas going to the grocery store, you can still social distance. And, and we have to eat, but right now our ability to receive our religion online is amazing. And our pastors are doing a great job and our churches are doing a great job. And I hope that we can continue to be responsible in those ways. Yeah, it, it is shocking when you see the number of cases around the country where uh, it has spread in churches, Arkansas, Georgia, uh, Washington, and um, it, 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 look, it's a, it's a short period of time, and we're encouraging pastors to think outside the box and do things differently to protect not only their congregation, but I think you would agree, Dr. O'Neill, we need to protect our health care workers because they're the ones that are going to see those patients. Yeah, Tony, at this point, I, I'm very fearful for my health care workers. When I wake up in the morning, that is my biggest fear is are we keeping them safe? And big congregations right now are putting our, our most vulnerable population, our health care workers, at risk. All right. Uh, thanks for uh, checking in with us, Dr. O'Neill. As always, great to talk with you, and uh, we'll check in with you again next week to see how things are going in Louisiana. Thank you, Tony. You stay safe. Thank you very much. Dr. Catherine O'Neill from Our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Not quite to the uh, top of their curve yet, so uh, we'll be watching that.